The Oakwood Cemetery, located just northeast of the town of Lewis, is directly connected to many notable Underground Railroad figures who played a role in the abolitionist movement in southwest Iowa, centered at the Hitchcock House. During this period, the Reverend George Hitchcock first built a log cabin that used to hide runaway slaves. His famous stone house on the hill overlooking Lewis was constructed in 1855 and was the site of a hidden basement room used to hide runaway slaves on their journey to freedom. In fact, it is the final resting place of over a half dozen people linked to the Underground Railroad movement. The town of Lewis was first plotted in 1851 and served as the county seat of Cass County from 1853 to 1869. Oliver Mills was a very wealthy land and livestock owner in the Lewis area. He went on to fame as a state senator, Colorado gold mine owner, and president of the Ag Society in Iowa that helped designate Iowa State University as an Ag-based college. What some local people also knew was that Oliver Mills ran an underground railroad station in Lewis. The house he lived in had a secret room in his attic that some believed housed runaway slaves behind a back panel on a closet door. This house, located on Main Street in Lewis, also had etchings and drawings on the attic walls, thought to be drawn by runaway slaves. The house was burned by local firemen years later in a practice drill, and the firemen witnessed both the secret room and the drawings. Mills was also the second cousin of John Brown, who attacked Harper's Ferry and tried to start a slave rebellion, only to be hung shortly after capture and arrest. John Brown stayed with Oliver Mills and Lewis multiple times. Oliver Mills was also involved in the 1858 Nicholas Slave Escape in which two young slave girls were smuggled from Tabor, Iowa to Lewis. The girls were later smuggled to Adair, Iowa, while a posse camped at the ferry house near the Nishinaabana River. Interestingly, Mills was forwarded a letter from Wilbert Siebert in Ohio in the late 1890s. Professor Siebert was researching the Underground Railroad and trying to document people who were involved, so he sent the information to the Lewis Post Office. The postmaster then forwarded the letter to Oliver Mills hinting strongly that many knew of Mills' involvement with the Underground Railroad. His son, John Mills, was also thought to have helped his father with the Underground Railroad and was married to a woman from a strongly abolitionist family. One of the notable Cass County residents to be involved with the Underground Railroad was Captain James Coe, who was in charge of the Union Army Civil War troops from Cass County. His regiment included 100 soldiers plus soldiers from other regiments. Captain Coe took his regiment to Fort Des Moines, Iowa, where they guarded Confederate prisoners. These troops later reported to St. Louis before moving on to southern Missouri and Arkansas. He returned to Cass County from there. Captain James Coe came to Iowa in 1855, and in the spring of 1857, he arrived in Lewis with three others. He was elected as a school board member at the time Lewis became an independent district and the Lewis School was built. Captain Coe is known to have abolitionist beliefs as exemplified by his service in the Union Army. Another Cass County resident with ties to the Underground Railroad was David Chapman. He was the first surveyor of Cass County and invited George Hitchcock to come see the area. He was a close friend of Hitchcock and their sons were also best friends. The two sons went to Kansas in 1856, where there was an armed conflict over the new state status as a slave or free state. The Chapman son accidentally shot Apha Hitchcock, who died from his injuries. Descendants claimed that he was involved in the Underground Railroad activities. Next, James Baxter was a wealthy farmer who built a large house west of Lewis. He was the largest farmer in Cass County in the 1880s who owned over 1,600 acres. The Baxter descendants are one of only two families still allowed to bury in the east side of the Oakwood Cemetery because the plots are full. Baxter was involved with smuggling the escaped Nichols slave girls from the Hitchcock House to Adair, Iowa. He was later elected as a county supervisor and became chairman of the county board in 1883. Urban 
Brackett was listed as an Underground Railroad member by Oliver Mills in the survey sent by Professor Sieber in the 1890s. He later was well known for inventing rubberized cloth used in raincoats. Samuel Tuft ran the ferry across the Nation of Honor River near Lewis for a total of 10 cents. This location is the site of the Nickel Slave Incident when the two escaped slave girls were smuggled across the river from the Hitchcock House to Adair before a posse could recapture them. They were able to escape to Chicago despite a $500 reward. His family also claimed that he was a member of the Underground Railroad. Lewis resident K.W. McCamer was a friend of novelist Harriet Beecher Stowe the author of famous abolitionist novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. He was also a member of the Congregational Church, which was well known for its anti-slavery beliefs. His daughter, Belle McCamer Reynolds, was the first woman commissioned in the army. She followed her husband to the Civil War, where she assisted at the Battle of Shiloh by loading rifles, helping behind the lines, and working in the hospital. She was commissioned a full major and even had a uniform. As you can see, the Oakwood Cemetery near Lewis has multiple connections to the Underground Railroad Station located at the nearby Hitchcock House. These people were an important connection to the process of helping slaves escape to a better life. We can only begin to imagine the challenges they face with this daunting task. We hope you have enjoyed this video. It was created by students in the Communication Arts class at Griswold High School. Students Pitt Valdivia, Maddie Main, and McKenna Witchman researched information, captured the video and pictures, plus narrated and edited the video. Special thanks to local historian Dana Kunze for his help in digging up information on the people buried at Oakwood. Thanks to Griswold student Mike Kunze for his help in locating gravestones. And a big thank you to Green Hills AEA staff members Judy Griffin and Jonathan Scarron for assisting us with the drone footage.